Birth. Genghis Khan was one of the best known warriors and leaders of men that the world has ever known. He was born in about 1162. When he was born, his name was Timujin, and he was the son of a chief. Stories say that Timujin was born with a blood clot in his hand. According to Mongolian folklore, this was a sign that he was destined to be a leader. His early years, however, made that seem unlikely. A hard early life. A rival killed his father when Temujin was only nine years old. After this, he and his family were left in extreme poverty. Their tribe abandoned them in the winter. Temujin and his family ate things like roots, wild fruit, and fish to survive. Temujin and his brothers had to work together. One brother tried to be independent and selfish, and he was killed. Temujin grew in power and influence because of his fighting skills and also because of his will to fight hard. Temujin's enemies and rivals began to fear him. At one point, a rival captured Temujin. One night, while his captors were eating, he escaped. This escape made his reputation grow even more. Growing into a man. Even in happy times, there was violence in Temujin's life. He married early, but his wife was captured by a rival clan. He was very angry and thought of a plan to get her back. However, he needed help in order to do this. Another clan leader saw Temujin's strength, and they became friends. Together, they gathered warriors and defeated those who took his wife. Temujin becomes a leader. Temujin's success in life was mostly due to his skills on horseback, with a bow and arrow, and in wrestling. His success attracted more and more warriors to join him. After each victory, he took the land from the people he defeated. He soon became a clan leader. The common people he defeated had a simple choice join him or die. Temujin becomes Genghis Khan. All of the Mongol clans declared Temujin to be their leader in the beginning of the 13th century. They gave him the title Genghis Khan, which can be translated as Universal Ruler. As the leader of the clans, Genghis Khan wanted to help the people. He wanted to make them feel a sense of community. Therefore, he made a code called Yasa to guide people in their daily lives. It is said that Genghis had a large personal guard. He was well protected. He also had an extensive spy network. The Start of His Empire Genghis fought many violent battles to get more land. He fought and won anywhere in flatlands, hills, or mountains. One of Genghis's enemies was the Jin people. The Jin controlled China. With an emperor and strong military leaders. Genghis was always fighting in northern China, taking land and people when he won. One famous battle against the Jin happened in 1211 in the mountains at Badger Mouth Pass near modern day Beijing. In this battle, Genghis had less than 100,000 warriors, while the Jin had at least 300,000 warriors. The Battle of Badger Mouth Pass. The two armies met at a place that favored the Mongols. Behind the Jin army was a narrow bottleneck, and because of the way they had been marching, the Jin army had its cavalry in front and infantry at the back. Genghis and his generals saw this and attacked at once. The Jin cavalry was driven back, but they did not have enough room because of the bottleneck. The retreating cavalry got in the way of the infantry and caused confusion. A great number of Jin soldiers were killed. The leader of the Jins, Wan Yan Yongji, and his remaining soldiers escaped to Huihe Forest. They were surrounded and attacked by the Mongols. The Jin army was destroyed, but Wan Yan Yongji escaped. 
he fled to Zhongdu, modern-day Beijing. So Genghis led his army south toward the walled city of Beijing. The Attack on Beijing Before Genghis arrived, Wanyang Yongji was killed. The new leader acknowledged Genghis Khan as his overlord and gave him valuable gifts, such as gold and silver, in order to save the city from attack. Genghis happily took these gifts and went home. It did not take the new leader long to anger Genghis, and in 1215, the Mongol leader marched back to Beijing. The large city had a wall with 1,000 guard towers around it. It was too tall to attack, so Genghis decided that the jinn should not get out. Genghis burned the area outside the wall. His men then surrounded the wall so no food could get into the city. Genghis's plan worked. Beijing didn't have enough food, so the jinn gave up. Genghis allowed his soldiers to sack the city. His soldiers devastated the city and made off with all the treasure. As for Genghis Khan, he went back to Mongolia. Speed wins battles. From his early days as a clan leader, Genghis practiced for battle. One way that he practiced was to train his horses daily. His horses could run very long distances quickly, so he was always ready for battle. Genghis's army could suddenly appear and attack quickly. After victories, Genghis would move on to get new lands. However, the defeated people always feared his quick return. Expanding the Empire Genghis's empire now touched the Khwarezm Empire. Genghis wanted to trade with this empire, so he sent gifts and merchants to Muhammad, their leader. The governor of the city of Utrar in present-day Kazakhstan made a huge mistake. He captured and killed Genghis's people. Genghis, angered, sent an ambassador to demand that the governor be handed over. Muhammad killed the ambassador and sent his head back to Genghis. Genghis took ten Tumans, about 100,000 men, with him to fight in Utrar. Muhammad had around 400,000 soldiers, so he probably was not worried. Genghis split his army and surrounded Muhammad and his troops. Muhammad held out for a month, but Genghis and his men were victorious. His revenge was brutal. Whole cities were destroyed, including the people. Genghis the Legend Genghis Khan conquered parts of Afghanistan and Russia as well. The battles were bloody, and the number of deaths was high. The Mongols took a huge amount of wealth from Central Asia. Even his death in 1227 did not stop Genghis. The need to conquer and get more land was passed on to his sons and grandsons. Genghis Khan was the most feared leader that Asia has ever known.